Pop quiz time. What is a smart Nick? No, not that one kid from elementary school. Yeah, there was a smart Nick in my class, too. <laughs> We're not talking about smarty pants kids from school, which may or may not have included me. <laughs> we are talking about smart network interface controllers. And not only that, composable ones. Intrigued? I certainly hope so. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. We have come a long way since the original standard NICs, and today's cloud providers couldn't be happier. In today's Chalk Talk, Kartik Srinivasan from Xilinx joins me to discuss Xilinx's new Alveo SN1000, the industry's first smart NIC with composable hardware. Kartik and I are digging into all sorts of smart NIC details, including what the composable architecture looks like, how the Xilinx Vitus networking comes into play, and why software-defined hardware acceleration is key to the success of this new smart NIC. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Xilinx. Hi, Kartik. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, Amelia. Nice to be here. Okay, so we're talking about smart NICs today. But Kartik, how did we get to where we are today? The evolution of smart NICs started a long time ago in the data center server business. The first advent being regular NICs. And the entire purpose of the regular NICs was to get the packets or the traffic from the network or the switches in and out of the server. And life was going on fairly well up until like the 10 gigabits per second speed. That's when the CPUs started feeling a little bit of the throttle and they needed more help in accelerating some of the packet processing functions to the NIC, which gave birth to the offload NIC. And the offload NIC took on a lot of the packet processing functions from the CPU, giving the CPU some relief and uh, letting the CPU do more application stuff. The offload NICs, for the most parts, were based on ASICs. They did not have programmability and they were helping the CPUs up until the 25 gig 40 gig even, but when the Ethernet transition evolved to 100 gigabits per second, that's when the smart NICs came into existence. And the smart NICs allowed for more packet processing, programmability, and the ability for the CPUs to offload more intensive workloads onto this NIC IO complex. And the architectures that the smart NICs are based on today are ARM SOCs or FPGAs, or even some of them are hardened ASICs. And that allows for the smart NICs to give more CPU relief, thereby allowing the CPUs to do more applications and not packet processing. Okay, Kartik. So when we're talking about implementation here, what kind of challenges are we really looking at? The challenges are, are a direct function of who the consumer or the user is. For the most part, the smart NICs today have been deployed by the hyperscalers and the hyperscalers are like the top four in the US and three in China. And their early uh, deployments of these smart NICs, what they've taught us as vendors in the landscape is that there is no such thing as a typical data center. Each one of these hyperscalers comes with its own unique set of requirements without compromising on any performance. So they want the highest rate of packet performance and they have their unique set of requirements. What that enforces the vendor landscape to do is be able to evolve, be able to morph across these different functions and at the same time, maintaining the highest level of performance. Okay, so we also need to talk about offload, right? What kind of offload types are you seeing in this arena? We are actually focused on three different buckets of offload areas, and which are the security functions, the network acceleration functions, and storage functions. And within each one of those buckets, there is actually a full alphabet soup of acceleration modules that are needed to be managed by the smart NICs instead of the host CPU. And if you look at what the slide is showing here, you will see that there is a big list of functions that our customers have given us in terms of what they would like to be seen offloaded in the smart NIC. And at the same time, they also constantly remind us that this list is ever growing, ever evolving. And that's why some of these hardened implementations or even CPU based implementations of smart NICs come short because they're not able to scale to the performance that a hardware accelerated device can deliver. And at 
the same time, if you harden it too much, you lose the flexibility of the programmability and you're not able to keep up with the ever changing, ever growing list of functions. And that's where an FPGA based smart NIC comes very, very handy because it not only keeps up with the hardware acceleration requirements, but it also keeps up with the ever growing, ever changing list of functions that needed to be accelerated. Okay. So Kartik, your title mentioned a composable smart NIC. What exactly are the elements that make up this smart NIC? The composable smart NIC, the first product of its kind that we're calling the SN1000, is made up of three different constituents. The first one is the underlying FPGA, which is the flexible adaptable architecture on which this smart NIC is based. And that has a million programmable LUTs that allows us as well as our customers to add in functions that they deem more CPU intensive than others. So that is the foundational component of the smart NIC. Also over and above the FPGA device itself, we have ARM cores. We have a multi-core ARM subsystem for processing all of the control plane traffic. The slow path goes and is managed by the ARM CPU system in here. That is the second component of this composable architecture. And the third thing is the software that helps orchestrate and manage all of this. We are delivering um, the software programmable fabric called Vitus Networking. And Vitus networking allows for the, our customers and us to program the device, program the data plane through the FPGA, the control plane through the ARM processing subsystem, as well as orchestrating any of the, the changes or any of the traffic behavior patterns in this composable architecture. Kartik, can you explain a bit more about the architecture itself? Sure. So if you look at how this SN1000 is architected, it's got at the highest level, two different big blocks one is the fabric itself, which is responsible 100% management of the data plane traffic. All of the hardware acceleration of the data plane is managed in the FPGA. No piece of this is done in the control plane. And the ARM processing subsystem, we have up to 16 core ARM processing subsystem in here, and that is responsible for all of the control plane traffic. In this architecture, the composability aspect of this is all managed now by in the FPGA. So if there is going to be a customer that is deploying the SmartNIC SN1000 for their storage acceleration functions, as an example, they can enable and program accelerations for those specific storage functions, whether they are for NVMe over fabric, they can throw in security modules, they can throw in compression, decompression. All of these are acceleration modules that are composed into the data plane allowing our fabric to do hardware acceleration of those specific functions to enable storage acceleration. And at the same time, now our customers can decide that they want another traffic flow to be managed as a firewall. And now you've thrown in security functions, firewall connection tracking, and now you added more acceleration functions, or as I'd like to say, you've composed the data plane to now manage another traffic class to be able to access that traffic flow for firewall traffic. And now you added this dynamically, you haven't even rebooted the PCI card or the SmartNIC, you've dynamically reconfigured a traffic flow within the data plane to manage a firewall class of traffic. And now if you have more space, as I, as I said before, this device has got a million programmable LUTs. If there is more space available in the programmable fabric, you can throw in more functions in there. And in this example, I've thrown in a distributed storage acceleration for Ceph. And now this entire SmartNIC running at 100 gig per second is managing storage traffic classes, is managing firewall application, and then now it's also managing distributed storage. So can you explain a bit more about the composability aspect of this solution? What exactly is going on here? In the composability piece of this, when you're getting the device SN1000, the first and foremost thing that the customer wants to see is an out of box experience. So this plug and play capability is based on what we as a vendor are delivering to our customers as acceleration modules. So we're delivering functions, like we said, in the network acceleration bucket, in the storage acceleration, as well as in security. So we are ourselves as Xilinx delivering OVS acceleration, virtualization for networking, virtualization for storage, Ceph acceleration, IPsec, all of these are modules that we deliver as turnkey functions for our customers. But since there is no such thing as a typical data center, our customers would like to see the data plane be managed and actually accelerate functions that are relevant to them, that are more CPU intensive in their deployment. 
That's why the ability for our customers to remove acceleration modules that Xilinx put in and put in modules and program modules within the data plane that is more relevant to them, that is the definition of what we're calling composability. We're saying that this independent disaggregated ability to scale resources or scale acceleration functions to meet specific performance and feature set requirements for our customers, that's the composability that this FPGA fabric has. And that's what we're showing in this slide here, where we're saying that we can program in functions specifically to address storage, or we can program functions additionally to manage firewall kind of traffic or distributed storage, all of this being done dynamically within the data plane without having to reboot the system or even reboot the PCI card. So Kardik, you mentioned the Vitus networking earlier. Can you explain that a bit more as well? Absolutely. I always tell my customers and my ecosystem partners in here, doing hardware right is very important, but getting the software piece that allows for our customers to program the device, manage the device, orchestrate traffic is as important, if not more important. And that's what Vitus networking brings to this SN1000 composable solution. It allows our customers to program our device, manage our device, and kind of extract the maximum utility of this product and bring the whole concept of software-defined networking to a smart neck. So what we've done here with the Vitus networking platform is remove the entire difficulty which is associated with programming FPGAs. We're now bringing this FPGA programmable platform to a bigger development subsystem of software developers instead of traditional FPGA hardware RTL or VHDL programmers that the embedded systems or the embedded FPGAs used to have. So now if you look at Vitus networking, it enables high level programming language like P4 or C or C++ to be used and be compiled through our Vitus networking programmable library and access and program our FPGA devices. It takes the whole mystique away from programming FPGAs and makes it a lot easier for our software developers to access our FPGAs. Okay, great. Now, Kartik, do you guys have different solutions in this space based on the needs of my particular design? Absolutely. So the SN1000, which is what the core of what we've been discussing today, fits into our portfolio of NIC adapters. So now we have a family of NICs, starting with the X2 family of products, which services regular offload NICs for 1025 and 100 gig speeds. And we have those available for in PCIe as well as OCP form factors. It's not a smart NIC, but it definitely has capabilities to provide offloads in specific areas of low latency. Last year, we announced another product called the U25, and that is our 25 gig smart NIC. It provides acceleration for uh, machine learning functions, database acceleration, as well as network acceleration, but it's not composable. The first composable 100 gig smart NIC in the Xilinx portfolio is the SN1000. Okay, great. Well, this has been a lot to take in today. Kartik, can you recap your main points? Absolutely. So if I were to re-emphasize four bullets from this entire talk today, they will be as follows. The first one is that with the SN1000 composable smart NIC, we are enabling our customers to leverage software-defined hardware acceleration. The marriage of the ability to easily program the smart NIC and leverage the hardware acceleration of that is capable at 100 gigs per second, that's what this product can do. At the same time, when we're doing a software-defined enablement, we're also allowing our customers to compose CPU-intensive workloads that demand acceleration in their deployments. So it's a very application-specific acceleration modules, and we're not taking the approach of one-size-fits-all. We're actually customizing this solution and providing composability on a per-application basis. Third piece of this is that we're allowing this access to be very easy instead of having VHDL or RTL be a requirement. We're allowing our software developers to run P4 or C or C++, taking away the mystique with FPGA programming and allowing a lot easier experience in programming our devices. And the last piece of this is we are embracing heterogeneous architecture. 
We're saying that the data plane acceleration will be managed by our FPGA fabric and control plane will be managed by the CPU subsystem that is in the device. Complete isolation of data plane and control plane for security as well as ease of migration from CPU based offloads into SmartNIC based acceleration modules. Excellent. Well, Kartik, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you very much for having me here. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Xilinx. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.